FAI Hero, I here, and welcome back to another one Nature 23 video. And welcome to part two in the series. So, part two of the series, we're going to be talking about getting the car prepared as well as just getting prepared for the race dog board. So, generally, we're going to have to develop the car over time. Now, Right now, there are no new car design going on. There's no new development going on. And, of course, any development that we will have going forward as of the moment will probably not fall through until maybe, of course, let's face it, Saudi Arabia or maybe the you know, Australian Grand Prix. But generally, depending on the development path that we take, we're going to have to wow. Of course, make time for it to happen. Now, in order to figure out where we need to go as far as our car development goes, we will have to, of course, look at just generally where our car is strong and where our car is not strong. Of course, we'll have to look at the average of the car performance in order to really look and generally figure out where we need to go for the car. Now, of course we can display it by attribute values, but of course attribute values may not actually give us the full picture of where we need to develop. So I prefer to look at ranks on the grid and base most of our development on how we are in the ranks through the grid. Now, of course we have our recommended and crucial elements that we need to have for each race and each track. But generally, we want to try to make an all-around car if we can help it. And this is where, well, the development path will have to be decided on. Now, right now, I would say technically we need to up our top speed and we need to up our DRS effectiveness because we have great acceleration. We're currently third on the grid in acceleration. Our medium speed and high speed corners need to be you know, taken care of, and we need to continue to take advantage of the low speed cornering that we have. But generally, our car is okay. It's not great, but it's okay. So, let's go ahead and look at our first car development. Now, at the moment, we can only design new parts. It's not until April 17th of 2023 that we can start developing new research and start the development path to next year's car. So, for now, we're just looking on this car going forward. So, where do we take it from here? Well, we have to first decide which way we're going to go on. And we have to look at what parts that might be worth developing. Now, like I said, because of the way that our car is on the grid, we need to start developing for more top seed and better cornering overall. It's okay if we work on DRS effectiveness and very air tolerance, but at the moment, <clears throat> cornering seems to be, the and top speed, seems to be our most ideal solution slash understanding that we need to make work going forward at the moment. So, with that happening, I think we're going to go ahead and first of all start with developing the under four. Now, at this point, we can basically decide how we're going to de develop the car, how much time we're going to put into the testing and all those other things. First, let's face it, we're going to be limited to how many hours we can do, so we can't just put like 6.6 .6 hours into the entire under four because at that point in time, we wouldn't have enough time to really look at other aspects of the car or test for our aspects of the car. 
So I think we're going to start with maybe at least for M4 because it is an important part of the car. We're going to put at least 1.5 hours of CFD time into the under four. Now we have 88 hours of wind tunnel time. We're going to also have to look at putting in some wind tunnel time to improve the car. At this point, I mean, we obviously can put in a little bit more. But I would say, at least for me, I'm going to go ahead and put about 24 hours into the wind tunnel for the under four design. Now, at this point, we move into the design focus. Now, if you don't feel like making the design focus, or if you don't feel like customizing the design for this at all because you don't understand what the heck is going on, don't worry, you can always make it bounce. You can always choose to make high speed performance a thing, you can always choose to make low speed performance a thing. You can always optimize aerodynamics if you really want to. But in this case, or you can just make it completely balanced. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and show you how that I adjust these things, how I make it work for me, and how it can become overall better. So first and foremost, I would say we should probably look at drag reduction. Now what does drag reduction do? Well, drag reduction, if we lower it, as you can see, it'll lower top speed and it'll lower acceleration. We don't really want that to happen if we can help it. If we raise it, we, of course, improve our drag speed reduction and we improve our top speed. So, I would probably recommend maybe, maybe touching up like that much right now on drag speed reduction, which would improve our range on the grid by four places, which is good. Of course, car performance wise, it would be about 0.32 kph or kilometers per hour improvement. So, generally, that's the first thing we'll want to do. Now, let's look at low speed reduction. We don't really want to lose low speed reduction if we can help it and put ourselves like, for instance, 16 on the grid. So, we're going to try to improve low speed reduction just a tad. Now, medium speed reduction is really where we're going to have to try and perform up a little bit. So, we're going to top off medium speed production a little and maybe remove a little bit of the, um, <clears throat> a little bit of the airflow sensitivity. Now that will make it to where our airflow overall is going to be a little worse, aka 18th on the grid, but that's okay. Um, you know, that's okay because of course we don't really want to improve, we don't really want to lose too much. Now, of course, I'm going to lose a little bit of the minimal lifespan of each durability. Now, why would I ever want to minimalize the lifespan of the durability if having a more durable car means that it lasts up to 6 to 11 races? Well, it's just excess weight that we don't really want on the, on the car if we can help it. So, so make it to where we, um, where we can potentially lose a little bit of that extra, for instance, um, extra, for instance, um, <clears throat> extra, for instance, uh, durability would be a good thing. Now, of course, I mean, it's all a matter of judgment, it's all about our preferences. Remember that extra weight can help, especially with optimizing speed. And that's something that you'll have to consider is optimizing speed overall. Now, like it is, we don't want to lose too much of the under four, but we also don't want to lose too much, or um, we don't want to make it to where we're losing and too, we're having too much extra weight. So that's something that you'll just have to consider and you'll just have to play around with. Anyway, this is how we're going to go with, and this is what we're going to do in general. So what does this do for us? Our um, durability of the under four will only last about three to six races minimal, which means that we may have to uh, order more parts over time, and we may have to design more of these going forward. But that's okay. It will improve our overall top speed from 17 by four places, which means that we will go all the way up to about 13th place in top scene. <clears throat> Our medium speed corners will be going up to about 13th or so 
um, going forward, and we'll improve our high speed cornering by 50 lights or something like that. It improves everything except for dirty air tolerance, which we'll have to work on later on, but it's okay. I mean, generally, this is the first design part that we're going to be working on, and it's going to be the first part that will help us. Now, how do we go forward designing this? Now, the more engineers we have, the more time, or the less time it'll take for them to design it. But we don't want to put all of our engineers in it. So I would say we're going to probably put about four engineers, give or take, onto this part. And that'll be 33 days. Now, we could choose a normal approach, which will just make it to where they finish as soon as possible. We could go with a rushed performance, which will make it 20 days. Or... We could go in tents. Now, in tents will cost a lot more. Unfortunately, we just don't have that money right now. But if we were to go with in tents, then we would put extra hours in to optimize the design. And, of course, gain ex better part expertise on the car. But for now, we're just going to go normal. We're just going to pay the normal design cost, which is $1,450 out of the pocket, or 400, $1,450,000 pounds be on your currency in the world and it will be done in 33 days so we're going to confirm it and well there we go so now that that's working it'll be done in 33 days let's go ahead and work on our design shall we <clears throat> so what do we work on now we're already working on of course the um under the under four which increases our top scene on our corner and so how about we work on, for instance, maybe our cornering and dirty air tolerance. I feel like that might be um, a little bit helpful overall, is to work on our dirty air tolerance. But let's look at the car, based on the grid. And I think that cornering would be good. So maybe working on, for instance, our dirty air tolerance and, of course, speed would be ideal. <clears throat> so it's basically going to be the same plan, same thing as before. In this case, I think we'll go ahead and put maybe eh, one point, let's say 1.5 hours again into it. And in this part, because it's kind of a minor part, and because we don't really have to put too much work into it, let's say 16 hours into it. And then, of course, it's just the design focus once again, <clears throat> We're going to look at blood skin to design, so we can improve the drag reduction, which will allow us to improve the overall top speed. But um, I think we're going to work towards maybe getting our DRS effectiveness up a little bit more. Um, with that having said, maybe we'll work on improving slightly the airflow reduction, and of course, continue to maybe try to improve the overall <clears throat> speed as well now unfortunately there's not a whole lot we can do obviously to try and um change things up because let's say it, at the end of the day some parts are going to have <clears throat> more effectiveness than others some parts are only going to have slight effectiveness change wise so <clears throat> so really the design changes and the design flow really are going to effectively determine, if you will, the way the car is effectively. And because of that, you know, it becomes a bit of a balancing game. A bit of a balancing game overall to, to find the most effective way of, well, adjusting the car without losing too much in a sense if that makes sense and with that being said i think that's how we're going to look at designing the new car the, the next part so of course as before we're going to go ahead and send maybe three people on and we're just going to pay the normal thing with that being said we only have enough room for one more project on hand so we're going to go ahead and, <clears throat> I think, design the, <clears throat> the chassis, maybe. 
but let's let Elon can sing. So I think we're going to go ahead and work on designing a brand new front wing, which will help with brake cooling and all, all the other parts of this. Now, at this point, of course, we don't have a whole lot of time left until the end of the period, and we're probably not going to be able to, within 14 days, move into a new project. So we're going to uh, go ahead and just spend the rest of the time improving, basically, our front wing design. <clears throat> so with that having been said, let's see what we can do. I'd say we'll work a little bit on the low speed corners. Obviously, we want to improve if we can the medium speed. And we want to improve if we can the uh, high speed. Brake cooling, we want to try and maybe improve that just a bit. But again, we don't want to lose too much of our... <clears throat> We're looking not to lose too much of our, um, of our games. We want to try to... <clears throat> If we will, keep games as much as possible. <clears throat> we want to, of course, keep games as much as possible without losing, well, without losing too much. Too much, per se. So. So that's the main secret here. Is to try and play the, um, the balance game, if you will. So I think we're gonna go ahead and drop down a little bit of that extra weight <clears throat> just to make it a little more um overall better for us um but in general I don't think there's a lot more we can do I think we'll just keep it like that for now so I'm saying that doesn't improve the main car or car one very much but it will improve car two which will help us, generally speaking, <laughs> entirely. <clears throat> Anywho, with that being said, let's go ahead and do the development page. Of course, we're going to put our last few, uh, engineers on, and we're going to get things started. So, <clears throat> with that being said, those are all the developments we can do. Now, that will take us all the way to the end of, of course, ATR period 1 and NGAR period 3. In fact, the first part we may not have ready to go until it looks like the Australian Grand Prix. But that's okay. I mean, that's the way things go, and that's the way it is for development when it comes to the game. When we get into the next part of the series, though, we will be moving into our very first race, which is Bahrain. And we'll get into practice, how to uh, how to go about practice, how to make sure that your drivers are in the best potential spot they can be to make the race possible to win, or at least get as good of a point they can in the grid with them, in the grid order. And with that having said, hopefully you all enjoyed the sale. If you like the sale, don't forget to give the sale a like. If you do enjoy the channel and you do enjoy the series and you want to continue to see more, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And also don't forget to check out what's going on live on Twitch. There will be a link potentially somewhere in the description. Don't forget to hit that bell notification button. That way you don't ever miss a potential video that comes out now or into the future. And until next time, everybody, this is Steph AI. I, Signing out and saying thanks for joining me, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you all in the next one. But until then, everybody, farewell, everybody.